Hey guys, my name is Justin, and today I'm going to show you how I made these 4x6 projector headlight housings for my 97 Mazda Miata. I started with a set of these fake projector headlights that are all over eBay and Amazon. They're about 30 bucks, and they look pretty decent. They have these blue lights in the side of them, which I don't really like, so I'll take those out and save them for later. I started disassembling them, and I took off the boot and the headlight bulb, the hardware, and all the necessary screws. I won't be needing any of this as I'll be uh, cutting this apart anyway. I'm using a Morimoto mini projector for these lights as they're small, compact, and relatively cheap. You can see how they compare in size to these small 4x6 headlights. At this point I realized I wasn't going to be able to use that shroud that comes with the projector because it's just a little bit too big. But I ended up using something different that I found at the hardware store for a shroud. So next I started working on removing that fake projector lens that's inside the housing. Most people bake the assemblies in an oven for 10 to 15 minutes to loosen the glue and then take the front lens off. And then you can do all the work on the projector headlight from the front. I wanted to try a different approach since I knew I was going to chop the back end of it off anyway, I left the lens on. I was able to bend those mounting tabs for that fake projector uh, down and then I just used some tape to hold that lens to the front of the lens the headlight lens. That way it was out of the way uh, when I went to try and cut off the back of the headlight housing. If I did this again I'd probably just go for the oven and take the front end of the lens off. There were times where I wish I had access to the front but at least I didn't have to worry about sealing them back up. Here you can see I picked out some conduit from the hardware store and that ended up being a nice fit for the projector and it'll act as my shroud. I use it as a template to mark where to cut and I uh, just did a test fit to make sure everything was lined up. I made this wooden jig to hold the light while I did the cutting on my chop saw. This made sure it was nice and straight and uh, I could use this to make sure the cut on both headlights was exactly the same. Throughout the build I taped up the front of the lens uh, to protect it from getting scratched and I did this often removing and, and retaping as I needed. Next it was on to a lot of sanding and filing and more sanding in order to get the shroud to fit. The opening on the headlight was just a little too small and the, the conduit didn't quite fit so I had to sand some flat spots on it to get it to fit inside the housing. Here's where I wish I would have had a belt sander as that would have made this job a piece of cake. But eventually after sanding and sanding and filing of both the conduit and the headlight housing to get some flat spots on it, I was able to make everything fit and get it to slide inside. After I got it to fit, I uh, attached the or slid the projector in there and just did a test fit to see how everything line, was lining up. I then needed to uh, make, make some notches to cut out for the screws that mount the projector housing uh, to the projector lens. So I made some marks on the conduit to know where to notch it out. That way the projector could sit. Uh, as far in uh, on that conduit shroud as possible. I just used a Dremel and nibbled away at uh, the little notches and nibbled a little bit at a time. I wanted to make sure it was a perfect fit so I'd cut some out, uh, mark it, cut a little bit more out until I had a, a perfect fit. And that would help later for, for gluing, make sure there is not very many gaps. Once I had nice fitment, I made another jig to uh, chop the shroud down to size. Uh, in hindsight, I probably would have left this bit on there until after I was done mounting the projector, just because it would have made it easier to hold on to if I would have had the whole piece of pipe there. 
So I was at this point where I started to attach the projector to the shroud and I just used a small drill bit to make some marks and then drilled straight down into the side walls of the conduit uh, to make some pilot holes and then used some small screws that I had laying around to tap the holes and then uh, just used those screws to attach the headlight housing to the conduit and that made a really strong connection. It was about this point where I decided it would look better if the shroud had a rounded over edge on the front to match kind of the curves of the projector. So I used my router and a round over bit and just uh, made a nice little round over on the leading edge of the projector. And I think that made it look a lot slicker. It was just test fitting it into the housing and it, it looks pretty good. So after I was done making one shroud, I made a second one with the same process. Now I wanted these to pop inside the headlights, so I decided to paint them red to match the color of the car. I used high temp primer and high temp paint because I was planning on using HID projector uh, lights in here. And those can get pretty hot. I didn't want anything failing on me or paint peeling later down the road after I had everything sealed up. So I used... Uh, three coats of primer and three coats of top coat, uh, all high temp rated for over 500 degrees. I also taped off the lower half inch of the shrouds so that the paint wouldn't get on there and that would be where the glue would stick to. I didn't want the glue sticking uh, over the paint. I scuffed up the housings and the ends of the shrouds with some sandpaper just to make sure there was uh, something for the glue to bite onto. Shiny surfaces aren't good for glue adhesion. I used a hot glue gun here to tack the projectors in place. Uh, I got them all lined up uh, to where they were in the housing nice and straight and level and then just tacked them in place with a little bit of hot glue. I then chose to use some JB Weld to glue the shrouds into the housings because it bonds well to PVC and it's also rated for over 300 degrees so it won't be bothered by any high temperatures either. I mix up just a small amount at first and, and uh, put in a, a few spots of glue here to tack it in place and then came back again with another mixed batch of JB Weld and filled in all the rest of the areas uh, that I could get to where the conduit touched the housing. Made sure it was all filled in, tried to fill any gaps that were left. For some extra strength and more importantly waterproofing, I used this aluminum tape I found at the hardware store to seal the rest of the projector. There were some areas that didn't get filled 100% with glue, um, some small gaps, so this tape made sure that everything was sealed and watertight so that no moisture could get into the headlight housing. And also this tape is rated for over 300 degrees as well, so it's also not going to be bothered by... Uh, any of the heat and will stay stuck to the housings. Those little wires there for the projector are for the high beams and low beams. There's a shroud inside the projector that, uh, or a, a lent, a cutoff shield I get that uh, raises and lowers to make for high beam and low beam. I also cut out the little area for that blue light and I ended up using the blue light, but I removed the bulb and snipped off the two wires and just used the rubber grommet part to plug up that hole. That way I would make sure that no water or moisture could get in there. And that's pretty much it. If you can make one, you can make two.
Now, if your car already has 4x6 headlights, it'll be pretty easy to finish off your installation and just pop them into the car. But if you're like me and going from uh, this big round one to these 4x6s, you're going to also have to do some custom mounts and uh, make some shrouds for it. But you could use this method to make uh, any sized housing you want. You can start with any projector or any housing uh, that you can find on the internet. And uh, the combinations are just up to you and your vehicle. Hope you guys found that helpful and good luck making your own.